Hey, what's up, everyone? How's it going? Let me pull up my screen so I can see what you're saying. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Know Your Gear QA number 120. Uh, and uh, I thought I would um, share with you that it's August now and YouTube has changed a bunch of stuff. And one of the things changed how you have to now stream. <laughs> so I had to change a few things. So hopefully uh, you guys uh, will understand the changes. So we're going to work with them. We got some changes today. We, uh, hopefully we won't have any problems uh, there. Uh, so we'll go. We'll do our best. We'll do our best. Lots of stuff to talk about this week. Hopefully lots of questions uh, for you guys to talk about this week. Uh, my week went well. As you guys know, last week was my birthday. Had a great birthday weekend and uh, and then hit the... Uh, Hit the ground running on Monday, back to work. So, uh, Lawrence is here and he says, hey everyone, Matt Harrison, what's up buddy? He's here, hey, howdy. Um, what else do we got going on? A lot of a lot of people saying, hey, hola, Phil. Hey, Ed, what's up, hola. And um, let's see, ah, uh, Queen Finger says, wow, from the beginning finally. So, yep, yeah, you're here at the beginning of a live show, which is cool. Um, let's see. Uh, anything, anything up in your world? It seemed like it was a crazy week. I have a lot to talk about, but let's see. What should we talk about first? You know what we're going to talk about first while uh, people are joining us? We're going to talk about um, PB. Uh, so if you guys don't know what's going on, I thought it was cool, something to share. I will, of course, uh, uh, put the link in the index. PB right here, uh, is going to auction off $12 million worth of old, unsold guitars, amps, raw materials, tools, you name it. They're emptying out the old facilities. Um, there's a mention in the article about them keeping the new line of guitars that, you know, the old Wolfgangs that are called something else now, uh, going and stuff. But this seems to be something we've seen before. You know, it's a thing we've seen with Carvin and a couple other companies where, a liquidation of the American facility kind of always is the coffin nail or the last coffin nail in the uh, not going to make American product anymore. Um, you know, there's always going to be emotional feelings about that. With PV's concerned, you know, there's a couple things with me. Uh, one, I think PV is one of the last companies to leave the USA in the whole. I mean, obviously Fender's still here in the USA, but you understand it's like one of the what they're one of the last ones. So I give them credit for that. But let's let's be honest, they've had their fair share of horrible mishaps um, and uh, including bad product and bad management and you know. So, but more importantly, I thought I'd share the word uh, since that's been out there about uh, uh, what's going on. You guys keep hitting with Gibson. I knew we were going to be talking about Gibson today. I knew there was no way. Uh, that we wouldn't be talking about that. So hold on one second. We'll pin that for one second. Uh, so anyway, so like I said, I'll link in the description when this goes uh, uh, on the, re the rebroadcast. Uh, for those of you listening on the podcast, you'll, um, well, you'll have to just look in the podcast notes uh, for the link to, uh, if you guys want to try to figure out how to get any of that old PV stuff. And uh, yeah, Gibson and Gibson and what's going on with Gibson? Is there something going on with Gibson? <laughs> Gibson? Um, I said a couple weeks ago that I was kind of, sick of talking about Gibson. It feels like they always make the news uh, in a negative way or the rounds. Uh, so uh, I'll just hit this one. This is, I think, Leisure 927. I don't know. I'm saying it. Whatever. It says, thoughts on the Gibson video where they crush those Firebird Xs. Why did they feel the need to destroy them? Uh, here, let's show you a picture of this. Wrong one. This one. This is what uh, I knew you guys were going to bring up. This week, a video went up uh, by a guy named BJ. Uh, I think his name's Wilkes. Wilkes? I don't know. W-I-L-K-E-S. He is the guy who was in charge of crushing all these Firebird Xs. Of course, like every pretty, pretty much every YouTube channel, I received about 1 million or 2 billion emails about this subject. So I knew it was going to come up this week. Um, a couple things. <laughs> Right. Uh, Phil Bradshaw says, good Lord, what now? Yeah. In fact, it's actually uh, more to the story. I guess another video was released uh, yesterday of them uh, destroying or some of the ES series um, hollow bodies from the Memphis facility. Um, or maybe it was the Nashville facility. I wasn't sure. Whichever one they closed. Uh, anyways, uh, so here's what I'm going to say about this. It's it's really an emotional response because you watch it in the video. In other words, the sound of the crushing, the, the horror of watching guitars being destroyed. I, I, like everyone else, I cringed. I 
you know, you feel like a, a, emp empathetic. You're just like really sad. But um, it's tough because it was a guitar that nobody wanted. Now, don't take this as I'm saying it's okay to destroy those guitars. What I'm saying is, is that I think if we were told they had to destroy, you know, a few hundred guitars, I don't think it would be as emotionally powerful. Now, that being said, I try not to put the emotion in this. I try to think about it, just logically walk through the, the process. Me personally, I think I, I, I can only echo the sentiment I've read and seen on many videos where it just seems like there had to be a better way to handle this. I, of course, like with the Sharp of My Axe videos, the whole concept of that is to kind of fix up something to maybe stop it from going to a landfill. And here's a company throwing hundreds of guitars into the landfill. Um, obviously, I'm not for it because <laughs> as, as much as uh, I read the uh, the public statement that said um, that a couple things, there's some positives, so we'll end on a positive with this, but a couple things that basically said that uh, the guitars had to be destroyed because they were defective and or dangerous. There was dangerous materials. I can only assume they're talking about maybe lithium batteries in the guitars were dangerous, um, which, you know, sadly enough, we'll never know. You know what I mean? We just don't know. Um, but the question is, and this is where I, I want to reach out to you guys about all this stuff. And, it, and so here's a good question. Here is Ump. Uh, I'm up three PLS DN, whatever it says they should have donated them to schools. So I, here's what I'm saying. Those are things that you should be emailing Gibson right now. You understand that what happened is done. Okay. It's done. They, they destroyed those guitars. You, they destroyed those guitars with a, with a machine of giant <laughs> tractor looking thing that you, you and I as consumers who bought Gibson product or Epiphone product let them pay with you know the money we gave them so if you don't like the way they're doing business um then go ahead and either stop buying from gibson or epiphone or more importantly let them know your issue with it because um you know let them know that y you thought there was a better way that they could handle this it seems like a, a, a thing that they keep doing so that's what i'm saying you might want to let them know uh that you're not happy with it Telling YouTube channels, trust me, Gibson's probably not rooting through all the email, are these messages on these videos like you guys think they are. They may see a few here and there, but maybe let them know. The other thing is, um, yeah, somebody's saying you should have donated to the local human society. I can tell you right now, all of, in my opinion, all of those places you're suggesting they donate to, I, I've donated a lot of guitars, and it's more difficult than most people believe it is. A lot of places don't want guitars. they rather have money. So I think you're right, but I think they probably were better off kind of selling them like the PV thing. Sell off the stuff and then use the money, maybe donate that. I don't know. Um, but, but more importantly, you know... Uh, it's, it's kind of really horrible to watch. <laughs> That's why I said I was kind of not looking forward to this part of the show talking about it. Because, not because of any other reason then, it's just kind of a bummer, right? I mean, it's a bummer to watch it happen, and it's a bummer to know that that's how businesses are operating with that. But the good news is, there's a couple things. I saw where Gibson's donating 1,000 guitars, one guitar a day for 1,000 days to charity. I don't know if that's in reaction to this. I couldn't really find in detail what that was happening from, if that's something that was in place before, and they're kind of reminding everybody they were doing that. Either way, uh, <laughs> it's uh, I'm reading some comments at the same time talking. Um, I think uh, that's some good that come from this. If that's if anything, I do uh, notice. I saw Lando. I think mentioned it. So you know, I I saw earlier the person BJ. In fact, I'm kind of concerned for the poor guy. He uh, his not only do I see the videos yanked down, I thought his whole channel's missing. I can't find it. Um, but so the videos were yanked down. So hopefully. Um, he wasn't threatened or anything. I'm not trying to say he was or anything like that. I'm just saying hopefully they, you know, he, he seemed like a pretty cool dude and he seemed like he was doing, um, he was putting the videos up for the right reason, not to kind of expose the company, but to basically show people, you know, this is what happened. And believe it or not, I think that's how a company can learn from a mistake like this. They put the videos out. I think this might be one of the, you know, these are all learning opportunities for Gibson at this point, because here's what's got to happen. John Evans says, why post the video? Um, I think to show people, right? To, to I mean, obviously, you know, you're going to get a, uh, you're going to get an emotional reaction to this. 
You know what I mean? From us, like how dare they? You know, my, my, my actually comment to the video, the first comment I said when a friend sent me the email or the video to show me was, I said, it's funny, like it's funny how guitar players think. Watching a few hundred guitars being run over by a tractor is so much more emotionally draining than let's say a thousand cell phones, you know, being run over by a tractor by a company. It seems to be such a, a personal thing to see, to see, uh, um, you know, to see something we care about being destroyed. So on that note, I think we'll, so obviously we've talked about it. I showed you a picture, the link to the video, unfortunately I can't put in the index cause it's been shot down, but I will tell you this Gatologist did a video of it, uh, that I enjoyed because he had BJ on there and BJ's on the phone, uh, talking about that. Um, you know, uh, and I thought it was probably one of the best ones of the videos I seen out there um, because the fact that he took the time to get the guy on the phone and talk to him about it. And then he had a follow-up. I didn't get to see it all, but he had a follow-up to the second uh, Gibson thing. So I'll put that a link in the description so you guys can see that. But like I said, I'd also, like I said, if you're a Gibson customer and this really bugs you, you should let Gibson know. If you don't like Gibson, well, I understand. It gives you one more reason not to like Gibson and go on your way. <laughs> right. Uh, so, but either way, it, it sucks, but it was done. In my understanding, I still, so you know, I still can't understand the logic of it. I wish I could give you guys some insight on why they did it. It seemed like a weird move. Um, and uh, if anyone has any more, we'll, we'll maybe recap it a little bit on the show. But that's what uh, somebody, okay, Ricardo says maybe recycle the materials. I think all of us in the aftermath of this could come up with a hundred things they could have done better than that. Uh, let me put it this way. Let's end with this on the thing. We'll end with this. I don't think there's a worse decision than that, <laughs> right? I, I, think, I thought of it that way. What could they possibly have done worse? Maybe set fire to them and put all that toxic stuff in the air. Maybe that had been worse. But other than that, putting that stuff in the landfill was pretty much the worst decision. The problem is, like I said, we can sit there and complain about Gibson and tell everybody, you know, not, you know, that we hate them. That's fine. If you don't like Gibson, don't buy from them. That will fix them. Um, but if you are a Gibson customer and you are, you like Gibson guitars and you want to continue to enjoy their products, but do not like the company's practices, let them know that you don't plan to buy from them anymore. If they're going to continue on this way, they'll either correct it and therefore you'll, you'll have your problem fixed or they won't. And it's time to move on to another product, another company. There's a ton of companies that are not destroying truckloads of guitars or doing weird stuff. Um, Wanna Beetle says, by the way, still like Mel Gibson. <laughs> That's questionable, <laughs> right? <laughs> I think he's more controversial than Gibson Gibson, isn't he? I don't know. I don't really keep up on that kind of stuff, but I think, la I don't know, maybe he's doing better. <laughs> so, okay. Um, there were some top chats that came in while I was doing that too. Let me hit those because, um, here was the first one. Brian says, is there any gear you won't buy used or new? Oh, uh, Yeah. That's a good question, right? Almost, almost. That's like the worst realization ever as an as an addict. If you're like, no, I won't. Um, any gear I won't buy used or new. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I, I think in that terms, the way I read that question is sometimes the way I read that is like a political stance. Like I've I've been on the record on the show to let you guys know my wife does not like Behringer and Bujera. And I did buy a Bajera attenuator. So, um, and, uh, and I was the, probably, the, so you know, it was the most nervous I've ever been buying anything and bringing it home. Because <laughs> I bought it just to do a video with it, just to see, because I felt like I kept saying things about Bajera and Behringer, like, like what this said, what I, I won't buy it no matter how good or bad it is, just on a, because my wife doesn't like anybody who kind of rips off companies and didn't like that attitude of the company, the, the Bajera kind of stealing ideas and stuff from companies, intellectual properties. And um, so to answer your question, I don't know. I think uh, the way I look at it is, I guess if a company is doing horrible atrocities to things, I wouldn't, I would, you know, uh, you know, black ball the company, right? I wouldn't buy anything used or new. Um, but for the most part, I think most stuff is fair game. I try to think of a company right now that I just wouldn't buy from and I can't think of one legitimately that I could say, you know, publicly, never. Um, Bujera would probably be, the, Bujera Behringer would be the closest, but like I said, I did finally buy a Bujera product and I thought it was pretty good. So, um, so there you go. Okay, next is Nathan, Sanye. Hey, I know that guy. He says, hey, Phil, what's the weirdest pedal you own? How often do you use it? You should demo 
a data corruptor. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know what a data corruptor is, so I'll have to check that out. The weirdest pedal I own. Um, huh. I, I mean, the first one that comes to mind looking at them is probably some of the Beatronic stuff. It's kind of out there and strange. I don't have a lot of strange pedals. In fact, I have my pedals. I'm looking at them right here, the majority of them that are on my pedal board. And I realize I have mostly just overdrives and some fuzzes, but mostly overdrives and distortions. I stay pretty, pretty normal uh, when it comes to pedals. And I don't even know what would be the weirdest pedal I have looking at them. I don't see anything that, uh, so I'll just say the weirdest thing I see, but hold on, gotta look around this way. Um, I hate to say it, the weirdest thing I can see is, is my Beatronics uh, fuzz pedal, because that's kind of out there and different as a fuzz pedal, but it's still just a fuzz pedal. I don't have anything, nothing wacky. I don't, I don't see anything. I feel like the most unexciting answer ever. Um, I've never bought, or I haven't bought any wacky kind of pedals. I'm looking, everything's like literally a boost, and overdrive, everything has a function, a, a, a purpose. So nothing, nothing. I mean, I could say an auto wah, but even then, nothing, nothing wacky. So I guess the wackiest pedal I have is a B-Tronics pedal. Um, yeah, I don't have anything that's out there and weird. I kind of, now maybe maybe I need to look at something like that. I've never re really had, you know what it is? For that kind of stuff, I have multiprocessors and I always find the weird sounds in there and just use those. So nothing's ever really kind of done that. Six in line says, where's the SG? The SG is in a case. I have my gold top and my SG in a case right now. Um, they're not on, the, on this wall and they're not in my other room. Um, because I, it's just the thing I do with Gibsons, major, mostly Gibsons. Whenever I go for a long period of time, I case my, my Gibsons. I don't know why. I think I'm afraid, you know, they'll get broken. <laughs> you know, look, when you're, when you're out of town, <laughs> I don't know, for those of you who have kids, when you're out of town, mysterious things happen, even in the plane, right? When you come back, there's that mystery dent in a guitar or, you know, I don't know, spaghetti sauce on something. I, I, so you guys, no, nothing like that has ever happened. But just because it's never happened doesn't mean it won't. So I put them away and I haven't pulled them out right now. So I still have it. My SG is still one of my favorite. I put that uh, that uh, Duesenberg tremolo on it. It's killer. I love it. Uh, Dale says, Phil, what equipment have you sold this week? I don't think I... I don't think I sold anything. I might have. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm thinking about getting rid of my yellow gem. So I put it on reverb. Just thinking about it. I put it up there. I don't know why. So redundant. I have two gems. And I feel like that's just one too many. Um, let's see. What else do we got? Hold on a second. I just want to make sure I'm getting both. I get both streams of, of your list of people's comments now with this new screen. Getting used to it. Uh, <laughs> Wanna Beetle says they won't break unless you own a steamroller. <laughs> He's, <laughs> yeah, the Gibsons. Yep. Uh, Tanner wants to know, Phil, what's my thoughts on the ESP, especially the Snake Bite? Uh, I know you're a Strat guy who also likes modern guitars. Um, I played the Snake Bite. Uh, my buddy Eric. Uh, sold his when I had the store and we sold the snake bite we had one in the store I checked it out it was cool it was one of those guitars like that I can honestly say I, I'm not into like you said I'm more of a strat shaped guy I'm not into the crazy shapes as much and when I played that and tricked it out I was like more that was more of a guitar like oh yeah if I was into this this would be something I would want um, I like the way it sounded I like the way it played it looked cool um, but yes, you're right. It was literally just, it's just, if you notice, there's a theme with my guitars. Um, this guitar right here, I'm pointing to a Framus, uh, television guitar. Whoops. Right there. Uh, which is kind of like a jazz master, jazz master esque body. That's about as far crazy as I get with the weird shapes. I mean, if you notice, everything's still got a stratty kind of look and shape to it. Less Paul's of course, you know, just more of the comfort sitting guitars and is my thing. And then uh, Michael wants to know, Phil, is my Parker guitar an older or original? My Parker guitar, he's asking me about that one right there. If For those of you on the podcast, I'm showing you a 
Par uh, Parker guitar up, bro. That Parker is a custom one. Uh, it's a newer one. Um, uh, it's like a 2000, I want to say eight or nine, you know, and it was custom made. So um, from Parker, uh, when I was a Parker dealer, um, I uh, uh, had them custom make that one. I had them made, uh, I think we did four, four wacky custom Pier uh, Parkers. And that was one of the ones we had make. And that's the one I ended up keeping. Okay. Uh, okay, what else do we got? <laughs> All right, uh, Alberto wants to know, Phil, what is that silver base at your right? It's, uh, it's not silver, it's like a mint green. I, there, I'm pointing at it right now. This is the whole looking in the camera point. I don't know why I just don't turn and point and then... Oh, that doesn't even work. This is funny, so you guys know. This is, I, uh, literally, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Right now, I'm pointing at the wall. But so you know, when I look, right now, when I'm looking at the guitar, I'm pointing at the guitar. So it's weird how that works. See, and right now, so you guys know, if you ever do this, you ever do a live stream, check that out. That's pretty crazy. I can, I'm pointing at a guitar. I Right now, I'm pointing at a Dan, a Dan Electro guitar. But when I look in the camera, the camera's, the angle of the camera sees it differently than I'm seeing it. So that's probably why I'm having trouble. Anyways, that bass is like a mint green, uh, metallic, uh, greenish metallic. It is a meso bass. It's a 32 inch scale bass. I have a video. It's our, uh, it's, it's done, but it will not come out for a little while more. And it's that against my Warwick 32 inch scale bass and telling uh, the story and comparing them. Um, you know, it's, I, I think I'm going to title the base, that video, like $300 base versus $7,000 base or something like that. Something clickbaity like that. I think that, you know what I mean? But, um, it's just not done. It's, it's just not a done video. It's the audio I have to master and stuff. Okay. That, oh, hold on. We got my screen jumped. Hold on a second. Um, let's see. Austin Weir says, what do you think of Nags guitars? I just bought a Steve Stevens uh, uh, Sovereign, and it's the biggest, oh, it's the best guitar I've ever played. Well, my buddy Larry Mitchell has his own uh, Nags guitar. I love Nags guitars um, because I'm, my, I, you know, so a lot of people associate me to it, like liking PRS, but the problem is, is if you really pay attention, I play a PRS Mira. I have two of them core mira guitars they don't make those anymore they make the s2s but they're different than the cores that's my favorite guitar and that guitar was a joe nags uh, i guess either design guitar or he was behind it and so when i play uh, nags guitars they feel like the mira to me i want a nags guitar i've talked about in the past about getting a nags guitar uh larry poked at me to get a uh, you know hey maybe we should get a nags guitar you know because he's he's a nags artist and he plays nags guitars um my issue with nags guitars for me is real simple I play a Mira, and to me, they play almost identical. And the Miras I have, I think I, 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 I paid a thousand for one, and maybe eleven hundred for the other one. I mean, a thousand bucks. I mean, that's a lot of money, but it ain't the three, five thousand dollar Nags thing. So that's what it is for Nags for me. It's a, it's a cost. That's a lot of money. And I, I agree with you. That they're a fantastic guitar. If you're looking at something exciting, high end, expensive that plays great and has a cool killer vibe, a Nags guitar is definitely a guitar I could recommend. You know what I mean? Um, a little less, a little less um, corporate feeling than the PRS stuff, right? Because he's the underdog kind of guy. But um, definitely cool. But I mean, it's got a price point to match. So that's that's the that's the deal. So I mean, it's gonna you know, if you see me with a Nags, you'll know I lost about four or five guitars to get that. That's what it would take to sell off to get a, a Nags in the in the collection. <laughs> um, so. Big Idea 100 says, I would love to own an old Valley Arts guitar. Oh, yeah. You know, does anyone know if Valley, whatever happened? Did I know at one point Gibson owned Valley Arts, right? Valley Arts guitars. And then I, I lost track. That's one of those things like you'd think I, but it's just, it was off the radar. But um, I know for a fact Gibson owned them for a while because uh, a good friend of mine who used to be the Gibson rep uh, a long time ago, he has a Valley Arts and he got it when he was the rep for Gibson when they were, the they owned them. Um but um, I don't know who owns them now or if they even exist anymore. So, oh, great. You guys are pulling out some crazy cool questions. Michael wanted to know, Phil, what are your thoughts on the VG Strat? The VG Strat was a 
Stratocaster, American made, but then later, well, let's start with the easy part of the story. Uh, Fender came with an idea, which is to make take an American Strat and put technology in it. Hey, so Gibson's not the only ones that come up with these silly ideas. Uh, Fender came up with that same time. In fact, the same time Gibson released the robot tuners in the guitars, the first iteration of those robot tuners, when they were actually calling them the robot tuners, uh, Fender came out with the VG Strat, which was a SAMIC. It's like the, it's this, it's the Line 6 t type of technology. It was a Strat that you could be a Strat and then hit a switch and it would go digital and you could be acoustics or detuned or open G tuning or whatever. I th it was like a setting. I don't think it had open G tuning. It had like drop detuning and a couple things like that. It was a really cool guitar and um, it had Roland technology in it. And so what happened was it was it failed. It failed as a market. Uh, it didn't fail as a guitar. People who have them love them. I think Robert Baker has one, so you know. So you might want to check out his channel if you ever want to review one. I'm pretty sure he has one and he likes it. But um, anyways, to that point, um, later you'll see ones that are now made in Mexico because later um, Roland didn't like the idea of it dying because they obviously did the technology behind it. And so they did a weird deal where Roland had Fender build them in Mexico and then Roland sold them. And the reason I remember that is as a Fender dealer, I remember we couldn't get them unless you were a Roland dealer. It was a really weird thing. And we were a Roland dealer, so it was weird. You had to buy your our Fender VG Strats from Roland. Um, so there's two kinds, so let's, you know, either way, they're both made from Fender, but there's Americans and made in Mexico uh, VG Strats. And it's just a VG, V and a G. Okay, so uh, every time I say robot drink, uh, tuner, you should drink. Go ahead. <laughs> In fact, if you want, I'll say it every two, three minutes until this show's over. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Okay, hold on. Uh, Scott's got a great uh, question. He says, hey, Phil, happy week after the birthday. Thank you. I appreciate that. Maybe you can go through Tuner 101. What do you, what to do when one of your tuners are hard to turn and how do you adjust them properly? Sure. Well, first thing is if one's hard to tune, uh, turn, you understand there's a screw in the, in the head of the tuning key and sometimes you need to make sure that's, that's, because uh, there's what happens is oh I'll have to take, take a piece of paper here here give me give me one second while my astute awesome uh, artistic this is my cool art I don't even, there this is horrible this is like the worst idea I've ever ever had this is a tuning key in my brain when I draw it this is the tuning key what's gonna happen is this piece right here if you look will be a nylon uh, washer and on the top of most tuning keys is a screw, and if you tighten that screw, it compresses against that nylon washer. When you go look at your tuning keys, you'll see what I'm saying. There'll be a little metal disc washer and then the nylon, nylon, the plastic nylon washer. Um, as you turn that tighter, it compresses that ring. It makes it harder to turn. Hopefully, that is wrong. what's wrong with your tuner. So if you go up there and loosen that screw, the problem is voila fixed, and you just adjust all the screws equally. And the idea is that you can set that tension however you would like. However, if that's not the case, either you don't have the screw or that's not the problem, then you probably have a binding issue. And luckily, or hopefully, you'll be able to lubricate that um, with some lubricant. Or in that case, it's time to replace the tuning key. So that's what you do. And that's tuning key 101. There. I don't even need a video. Or maybe I need a better video. I don't know. You guys let me know. Um, uh, Will wants me to know, Phil, did you see Robert Baker's last video? He just bought a Gibson Pro 30, uh, 335. I did, of course. I, I was watching it, and I, I loved it because it's the same. It looks like the same uh, 335 that um, Michael J. Fox used in Back to the Future. So, of course, I was like, wow. That to me is like, to me, when I think of like famous guitars, I always think of like Back to the Future and of course, like the, you know, the, uh, um, uh, what was it? Oh man, what is wrong with me? The movie with um, Crossroads, right? With Ralph Macchio and Steve I. Those guitars always kind of stick in my head as like famous movie guitars. So, um, hold on one second. Neil says, hey Phil, any thoughts on the Ibanez EGN8 Herman Lee guitar? Also, are there any PLUs or, hold on, to buying, I'm going to say pluses or minuses. That's what he's saying. Gotcha. Okay. I got, I got it. We're on the same page now. So Neil A wants to know if there's any pluses or minuses to buying a used guitar that may be 10 years old compared to the exact same model that might be 
only one year old. Okay, so those are two questions, and we'll uh, hit them both equally. The Herman Lee guitar is essentially just like the Nita Strauss and the old Sabre guitars. It's an SA guitar. It has the weird handle grip on the front, and I liked how it had the sandal, uh, the satin finish on it. I liked the guitar. I like Herman Lee. He's a cool dude as a, as a person, not not just as a guitar player. Both you know, both cool guitar player and person. Um, the, the 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 grip thing if you if you like that then the guitar is cool me personally i'm not a fan of that grip looking thing uh that was a little weird for me um the steve i thing's already weird and then that just took that to 10 <laughs> right but so you know like the steve i handle whether you like it or not when you hold the guitar from that it makes a lot of sense like the herman lee guitar when you hold it from the handle the little hand cut ins on that horn it, it's kind of cool it makes you want to hold the guitar there just aesthetically it doesn't do anything for me um the quality guitar seems fine. The ones I've set up and played over the years all been fine. No issues that I've found that were more so that couldn't be solved with a setup. And uh, so if you like the guitar, sure. The quite next question about buying a used guitar that's 10 years old versus one year old. Yeah, of course. The older guitar is, the more you need to scrutinize uh, the frets issues. You know, think of it like a house, man. The older a house is, the more you've got to look at the big issues. Roofs, plumbing, right? Those are the things that go bad. Everything has a shelf life. Guitars don't have a shelf life, per se, but certain things on guitars do. Frets <laughs> are one, um, and those are going to be expensive. For instance, if it has a bad electronics, well, that's inexpensive to fix. You can put in a new output jack. You can put in a pickup. You can fix a potentiometer. Those are things, generally speaking, on a guitar that are not going to be expensive to fix. Um, uh, comparatively speaking, uh, a refret is not a, an easy endeavor for you to do. So you're going to have to take it somewhere to be done. So yes, the first thing you want to do when you're looking at a guitar that's 10 years old is really scrutinize and the frets to find out how much life is in the frets. And when I say scrutinize, not just look at the divots in the frets, but I assume unless a guitar was never played in those 10 years, which is very possible because let's be honest, some of the guitars don't always get to some of us are collectors as much as players. Um, but if they, it is played, it's not about the divots and frets and whether it needs to be crowned. Generally speaking, especially, oh, we'll talk about Ibanez because that makes it easy. And Ibanez, uh, that Herman Lee will have jumbo tall frets. Those tall frets on Ibanez, I particularly would not want one that has been crowned more than twice. I think that guitar probably gets three crowns, crown levels out of its life before the frets are a little too low and too flat for me. Um, so if that guitar is 10 years old, he the player might have had it crowned and leveled, which to you aesthetically, when you see it, the guitar will look fine. The frets will look fine. But through further examination, sometimes you'll find out they're a lot lower than you think. And what will always get you is just picking up for a minute, you know, and playing it because it's something you're playing won't detect right away. What will, what will get, the reason why you're concerned about a guitar that's been maybe crowned and leveled twice is that uh, let's say a year from now in your time, when you need a little crown and level, now you're going to go to a tech or a luthier who's going to say, yeah, I don't want to crown a level. It's going to be too flat. Let's go ahead and rip the frets out and refret them. So those are things you want to look for. The older the guitar, check that out. Other than that, you know, look for the typical things like hairline cracks and stuff like that. And Ivan is is pretty straightforward. That guitar is a pretty straightforward guitar. You just want to look for some damage around the headstock and or the neck uh, where the meets the body. Those are going to be some of the key points for damages. Um, other than that, I, I don't know. Everything else should be fine. Um, hold on. I'm going to do some non top chats and then hit the top chat so that I have saved. Uh, what else? What else? Okay. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, <laughs> you guys are still talking about the Firebird X's. I saw one on Reverb. I was curious when they destroyed them. I don't know why, uh, I, but when I looked it up, somebody's got one on Reverb for 8000 So if you guys are really, really want one, uh, I think Gibson just drove up the price on the ones that exist. So it's crazy. Uh, the the ma ma man, the ma man uh, says, thoughts on my Dane Electro 58 Longhorn bass? Talking about that bass right there. And I'm not even going to try to point. Oh, I got it almost in one shot. There I am pointing to the bass. Uh, I have no idea. I have literally played it all of maybe five minutes. I just lowered the action on it. And um, so I don't know. Uh, the uh, the fine folks at Dane Electro sent that to me to check out and uh, maybe demo. So 
that'd be cool. I'm excited about that. And so when I say they sent it to me, it was something, again, I discussed with them. I was letting Dana Electro know. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of the 59 NOS right there that I'm pointing at. Uh, I, I'm big, big on that guitar. It's one of my favorite guitars. I uh, I don't know if I ever explained why, though. In fact, when I did the reviews of it, I don't think I explained why. I like it because it's a guitar. I love guitars that make you think differently and when i play that guitar it's like everything to me is a song it's not a riff like i don't play riffs on that guitar i don't sit there and, and think of a riff and play it either you know one i'm playing you know uh maybe a cover riff or a riff i thought up i play chords and songs like i just want to sing and play or just play music it's a guitar that just inspires me to play music and um, because nothing about me thinks like, oh, I should practice my scales or I should work on this or I should. Hey, this is a great Van Halen song. I just want to play some songs kind of like an acoustic guitar does for me. When I pick up an acoustic guitar, I never kind of try to, you know, work on our, you know, arpeggios or scales or anything. I just literally start playing music. And to me, it's like it, it's it's like home cooking. It's just something. It's not fancy. It's just what you need. So that's what I like about that. So of course, having those conversations with Dan Electro, they sent me one of the bases, which I can't point to because I give up. You saw it uh, to see if that's kind of instills that same kind of uh, kind of feeling in me. So we'll see. Um, it was odd at first when I picked it up. It was an odd feeling instrument, and I haven't literally even plugged it in yet. But I promise. Uh, th I will tell you this before there'll be a YouTube video, there will be an Instagram video of that base, uh, within the next day or so. So I, I'm going to do a short video of it. Okay. Um, hold on. I have some super chats penned. I don't want to top chats, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Chuck in music says, Hey Phil, if you didn't own your Archon, would you buy the MT 15? Okay. Or the Archon again. Also, how how the, do the cleans on those amps compare to the Hot Rod Deluxe? Thanks for all you do for us. Thanks, uh, Chuck. I appreciate that. It's an easy question. So if I didn't still own my Archon, would I buy an MT-15? Uh, yes. Um, I honestly really love the Archon and the MT-15 and uh, really, really like those amps. And But I, I think when I did the video, I, th I explained that I had the Archon. I like the Archon slightly more than the MT-15. And so what I would say, honestly, is if I didn't buy an Archon, if I didn't have an Archon right now, like you said, perfect, I'm starting from scratch, would I spend the extra money past the MT-15 to get the Archon? No. And and an on full disclosure, if you watched my very first video on that Archon, I bought that used for like $750 after it all worked out. So in my head, I didn't spend much more for the Archon than the, than the MT-15. Um, and... So, so that's, that's the first thing. So yes, definitely would buy the MT-15 over the Archon unless money's not an issue, right? I mean, sometimes, you know, I'm not saying rich. I'm just saying, you know, some people don't have a problem spending a little extra to get what they want. I get in that mood sometimes. We all do. Like I want what I want and it doesn't matter that it costs more. Um, if that's the reality of it, then do it. But if you're asking me for the money, would I, you know, spend the extra money if I, uh, no, I like the MT-15 or not enough. Um, the cleans on those amps, I think the Archon's cleans just a little better. I don't know what it is. That's really where the Archon shined for me was the distortions were almost alike on the amps to where if I said the Archon's distortion was better, it's 1% better. If I say the Archon's cleans are better than the MT-15, they were 10, 20% better. They're smoother, creamier, velvety. Without a doubt, the Archon clean to me is better than the Hot Rod Deluxe. The MT-15 is as good as the Hot Rod Deluxe. There you go. That's that's my uh, that's my honest uh, goodness feeling on that. So there you go. And um, yeah, the only complaint. Oh, I should point this out. My only complaint about the MT-15 is it's loud. It's that's the other issue I had. It's like 15 watts, which we know if you guys watch, I'll index this right now when I did the rebroadcast. I in, I interviewed the inventor of the amp and and I even talked to him about it and 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 that was Doug Sewell and he even said that the amp was essentially a 55 watt amp or a 50 watt amp that they they can push down to 15 watts by changing a they changed a couple of components here and there. But anyways, my point is I can get the Archon quieter then I can get the MT-15, which is another wacky thing that's that's there. Um, so that's one of my own complaint is it doesn't get. In fact, so you know, I was at the uh, Guitar Center in Nashville and uh, checking out some stuff when I was in Nashville, and 
because there was an MT-15 out there on display, I plugged in the guitar that I was checking out there because I like to plug a guitar into something I'm familiar with on an amp. I, if I'm looking at a guitar, don't I don't like to try a new amp because then I can't tell what what is the amp and what is the guitar. So I plugged into the MT-15 and you know, it's funny is the second I plugged into it, there was two things that immediately happened. One, I forgot how much I love that amp. And two, I couldn't get the amp quiet enough to where I, I felt comfortable in the store. Everything I was playing, I kind of felt like I was playing loud enough to be like the look at me riff, you know, right? That's, that's that volume. Like, Hey everybody, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, and so that reminded me how, how hard it is to get it quiet, even in the lower seven watt mode. Um, you know, that whisper kind of just playing by yourself, you know, and no one can know that what you're doing kind of volume. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Uh, six in line's got a weird question. I don't understand it. It says, Phil, the icons you, you use in your videos of the pedals are PNG with an, with an alpha channel. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I barely know what PNG means. That's like a graphic, right? I'm not a graphics guy. I've learned this YouTube stuff, the videos and stuff the hard way. Like this is literally trial by far fire. So I've learned editing everything. You know, I can honestly say that when I started doing YouTube, I literally uh, didn't own a camera, uh, didn't have any video editing software, didn't do any graphic stuff. I mean, come on, man. My shirt's stick figures. <laughs> how, how crazy can, you know, um, so I don't understand the, question are you asking how i do it um the 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 graphics that i have for my vids so if you don't know what he's talking about or they're talking about six in line is talking about is on my videos i have uh graphics icons that tell you whether or not a product was provided to me by a company whether i purchased the product whether i'm using patreon dollars to support this particular video or or if it's independent independent always implying that somehow i'm out some kind of money <laughs> right. So in other words, I maybe bought the product or I'm funding it somehow, um, you know, through my own funds. And then I have an icon that says that I was paid by a uh, manufacturer. And um, so I have those icons that tell you the idea was and it has been uh, to try to be transparent. Like I said, I, I never had a problem with any how anybody does any YouTube videos. I just like to know when I'm watching what I'm watching. And I think you guys do, too. So. Um, so that's what those icons are. I created these really, really horrible little graphic things. And when I did that, one of the amazing viewers out there sent me an email and said, here's better ones. <laughs> so I use those. So I have no idea how they were made. Um, there you go. <laughs> so I use something that, the, the, that you guys made for me. So I appreciate that. Um, but I like doing the icons. I thought, like I said, I always thought they would have ca caught on. I thought it was going to be this huge thing. I was going to revolutionize YouTube. <laughs> Nobody cares. Um, but uh, but I still like doing them for myself. It's really cool. So um, what else do we got? Let's go to a pin question. How are we doing on time? We're doing great on time. By the way, I feel horrible because somebody did a top chat, but I can't pronounce the name, and that's and they just did it for no reason. I'm going to say for fuel for I have no idea. I am so sorry. F U E R A D E L G U E go. <laughs> you know what's sad is sometimes when I read these I can't my brain just cannot figure out what's going on with the letters. They're all pushed together. And then later I'll look at it and I go, oh, that's what it was. So um Nathan Boone uh says, uh, what guitar would you get for under a thousand dollars? Ah, strat. Isn't that horrible? No, no, no. I won't be that. I'm boring. Uh, $1,000. If you Let's play a game. If I had $1,000 and I went in a store, obviously, what would I be looking for right now in my today, right now, because you're in different moods to do different things. Uh, right now, I'd be definitely looking at an LTD Eclipse, hopefully white with EMGs. I'd be looking at a Telecaster made in the USA, probably used at that price or... Uh, like, you know, one of the, uh, you know, lower price point American ones, or maybe even a made in Mexico one and save some money. Um, I'm in the mood for that. Uh, another thing I would probably buy for a thousand dollars is if I, I'm talking about the stores, right? So stores. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe a Schecter, right? I, I, I kind of, you know, I sold my old Schecter off when I got the, uh, the Solar guitar that I can't point to. I can't even figure out where it is. There it is. Right there. That's the solar. This is the dumbest thing ever when I point to guitars. I think I'm going to stop just because I feel like this is just 
like a crazy person trying to do this. Anyways, when I got that solar guitar, I got rid of my uh, thing. I'd look at it. I'd also look at buying another solar guitar. So I really like it. I get asked that. I think the solar guitar is what interests me the most. It's the one I get asked about the most. I think of any guitar I've ever reviewed by far. People seem to be really in tune with how much I still like it. And how much do I, do I still own it? What do I do with it? And, uh, and that guitar single handedly changed the way I felt about the Indonesian Korean thing. At first I was really like, I like Korean guitars cause I do. And I was like, well, there's no way Indonesia is ever going to be as good as Korea or at least right now. And that guitar was the first one where I was like, uh, no, I like that. It's made in Indonesia over my main Korea guitar. I sold a maiden Korea guitar and got that Indonesian guitar. That tells you a lot. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> SD design says, cheers to Mr. McKnight. I wonder if he likes Mickey D's and then he put a cheeseburger emoji. Um, well, you know, with this figure, you tend to like cheeseburgers. <laughs> no. Um, you know what? Uh, McDonald's is fine. I like the fries, right? That, that's the whole thing. So, you know what I really like about McDonald's? I don't know. I don't know why I'm going to share this, but it's the truth. I like that they have like 69 cent uh, ice cream cones. Um, I uh, I don't get all sappy, but I'm going to get sappy for a second. I love, you know what I like about McDonald's? When people crap on McDonald's, the one thing I, I kind of always remember or think about McDonald's is I don't care if you're broke. You can go to McDonald's with your kid and buy a 69 cent ice cream cone and let them play on the playground. And that is kind of cool no matter how much crap McDonald's does, no matter how evil of a corporation the vibe is or whatever, uh, all those things, that's just a cool thing to think about. You know what I mean? Um, in today's day and age, 69 cents is, you know, I mean, a dollar doesn't even buy candy bars anymore, I don't think. I don't I don't know. So, I don't know. So, I just thought I'd share that. But that's, a, so yeah, do I like McDonald's? Uh, fries and ice cream cones, for sure. I wish I liked milkshake, milkshakes. Um, I think theirs are good, but I probably haven't had a milkshake there in, since I was a kid. Lawrence wants everybody to know that French fries rule. <laughs> Although I will tell you, because I've had lunch with Lawrence a million times, and uh, he doesn't eat unhealthy, so I don't know why he's saying that. <laughs> so uh, he is a very, very healthy eater. So you know, if you guys want to know, if you have what, how you, ha if you want to, uh, uh, you want a, a strong mind that comes up with great designs and pedals. Understand that uh, part of it is probably the fact that he eats. Uh, like a very healthy person should. So uh, he is a good influence on me. I am probably a bad influence on him. Uh, there you go. Uh, all right. The uh, uh, Richard Peter says, what do you think of Harley Benton? What do I think of Harley Benton? Um, I have one right behind me. I can't even point to it. You guys can look. Look behind me. One of those guitars is a Harley Benton. Uh, I'm reviewing that one uh, right now as we speak. Uh, and, uh, I did a review of their acoustic and I did a review of their cabinet and, uh, you know, and I've talked to them at Tolman obviously in depth. And so I really understand the, con how it all works now. They buy gazillions and gazillions and gazillions of these things and sell them. And so that's how they're getting the price down because they're basically, they're the wholesaler and selling them direct. Um, I think, uh, I think Harley Benton is exactly what we know it is. It's somebody buying a lot of something inexpensively and selling it as cheap as they possibly can. And I don't know if that's a, a, a bad thing or a good thing. What I do know is this, you can buy a decent Harley Benton for a good price. And, um, you know, the real question is, is Harley Benton going to be around in 10 years, right? Well, well that's really going to be interesting to see. I'm really curious about that. Um, what else? Hold on a second. This 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 show seems like it's going a little weirder than the other ones. Like I feel like I'm all over the place. Uh, and then oh, somebody just uh, you know what? I just got another uh, top chat about that uh, Mezo base. Uh, when do you plan to show the video of the Mezo base? Um, when I finish editing it, I filmed it. I did a comparison with that in my Warwick, and then explained why that's why they need to be compared to each other. So I don't know. Uh, hopefully. I, I don't know. I hate I hate telling you guys on the live show, hey, I'm going to have these videos done because I feel like that jinxes it every time. So uh, I can just say that uh, I have a lot of content to finish and get to. Um, Chris just wants to know. Uh, Chris uh, St. Meyer says, just ordered a GNL ASAT. Somebody hates ASAT. <laughs> Somebody said they hate it when I say ASAT. I say it like ass hat. Like, yeah, like you think I'm saying it. 
because uh, isn't that from Caddyshack? Ass hat? I don't know. I like the saying, uh, ass hat. So uh, that's how I say it. But it's yeah, ASAT. Uh, and um, anyways, this is uh, special thoughts on the special and how do you like your GNL brand in general? Uh, also, are you liking your custom shop GNL? That custom shop GNL behind me, which I'll let you just, I won't even point to it, uh, is the best sounding guitar I own. Done. I know I once said that my 594 PRS is the best sounding guitar, I, I and it was until that guitar uh, came. That GNL crushes everything it is crazy how freaking huge of a guitar that sounds and dynamic and i'm not just saying that that's all my buddies that come over and they play the guitars they all come to the same conclusion that guitar just sounds great whatever amp i plug into whatever guitar i'm using as soon as i plug that gnl into it it really is a very huge and dynamic guitar and that guitar is a alder body maple neck uh chechen fretboard and then GNL pickups with a hardtail. So very impressive guitar as a whole. To the point where, you know, it it, it really, 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 really impressed me with GNL. And so, you know, I bought that blue sparkle uh, ASAT that has the tremolo. And I love the way that looks, but it doesn't sound as huge as this green one. Uh, and maybe that's the tremolo. It has a basswood body. I don't really buy into that. I know we talk about tone woods. Like I said, I think tone woods matter, but not to the point where I'm like, that makes a good guitar, a bad guitar. Everything has some influence on the sound to some degree, but not to the point where I'm like, I'm not, I'm buying into that hard onto it. Um, I really think the big difference is the tremolo system on the other guitar. And the other one has a thinner neck, thinner neck and tremolo system, I think is what's leading to that sound being a lot different considering they have the same pickups. Um, and, uh, and that guitar, as much as I like the way it looks, I don't play it because this green one sounds so much, so much better. So, um, <laughs> Wagyu says, ever, ever play slap on the guitar? Cheers for streaming. Wagyu, I will link uh, when I do the index. Uh, I do, I, not only do I slap on the guitar, I have a video on how to slap on a guitar. And I have a video in September. Uh, well, I don't have a video. I'm in a video in September where... Um, uh, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> I'm stopping cause I'm trying to think if the, if I have an, an, an NDA, a non-disclosure act on this. Um, I might have an NDA on this, uh, something I can't discuss until September. I, I, I'm pretty sure I know what I can say. Uh, I'm in a video with a bunch of other guitar players who blow my doors off. And in the scenario, I was asked to play something with them. And so what I did is I played some bass licks that I know how to play on the guitar and uh, it was really tough. I can't wait to talk about that with you guys because it was really tough <laughs> what I did. Um, and uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, that's what I did. OK. And then hold on. I want to go back. I don't want to neglect. There's 600 of us hanging out. I don't want to neglect anyone. Um, uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You guys are talking about the anti-satellite missile. Yes, yes. Uh, the the GNL ASAT is named after a uh, anti-satellite missile. In fact, so you know, most of the GNL models are named after military equipment. Uh, Will wants everyone to know that his ex-wife slapped him while he played guitar. Does that count? Well, I'm glad to know it's your ex-wife because I think you were in an abusive relationship. <laughs> so um, it does count, but sadly... <laughs> it counts. Uh, I hope you're in a better place, Will. I know. I'm just messing with you, buddy. Uh, okay. Uh, and then Emma wants, uh, can we please see a huge on the like? In other words, hit the like button. Sure. That'd be great. There's 600 of you. There's 100 likes. It'd be nice if there was 200 likes. That'd be good. Uh, Phil Bradshaw also mentioned 1,615 people. You don't have to hit like. <laughs> just just makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> uh, uh, and then damaged to uh, damage two six two says, why didn't I get a notice? Uh, silly YouTube. I don't know if he said Christopher question mark. I don't know if he's talking to me. Uh, if he is talking to me about the notice on the live show, everything changed in August, new systems, new everything. I had to learn it all in a couple hours today before we went live. Uh, so there you go. Yes. Uh, and then, so, you know, somebody's saying it's pronounced asset. I, ah, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, 
I still like ass hat. <laughs> I'm doing it on purpose. <laughs> Okay, uh, Blake Bean says, any experience with Schechter Solo 2 custom guitars? I'm wanting a single cut and trying to decide between the Solo 2 and LTD ES1, EC1000. Um, that's tough. I like them both. Uh, the Solo Solo 2 customs, I think, are fantastic. Uh, sometimes they're a little heavy, uh, so you got to sort through them and make sure you don't get one of the heavy ones. I've picked up ones that are heavy. Um, the... The way I would look at this for me, if you're looking for some some insight on those two guitars, the EC1000, the LTD EC1000, is to me what a modern Les Paul should be. A little th thinner neck, thinner body, streamlined a little bit, plays great, sounds great, feels great. It's it's a Les Paul for somebody looking for that cool, comfortable thing. The Solo 2 has got that kind of odd, off, not quite Les Paul shape, which is kind of cool. Um, but to me, the neck and the guitar sounds and feels a little bit more traditional like Les Paul. Now, these are very, very just my opinions on based on messing with those guitars in the past. So that would be the question you would ask yourself in those besides just, you know, which brand do you want and which one do you really want deep down? But if you're weighing on those two guitars, I would probably lean into, do you want something a little bit more on the traditional feel and sound or something a little bit more modern? I would look at the EC as the one, uh, 1000 is a little bit more modern. And the Solo 2 is custom. And keep in mind, there are versions of both that will kind of make what I'm saying not make sense. In other words, there's an EC where it's a little bit more vintage looking. But still, even though they have vintage looking EC-1000s, I still I kind of view them as more modern feeling. In other words, the neck. To me, modern guitars' necks are always a little thinner. It seems like as, as necks started out, they were thick and they just got thinner. I understand that's not 100% accurate. It's a generalized term that generally will fit most scenarios. Um, oh, Nova, great question. Hey, Phil, any thoughts on the 920D everything strat loaded pick guards? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a seller. I, I know them off eBay. They sell completed loaded in uh, pick guard kits. Um, I bought a couple from them because even though, you know, price wise, it's not the cheapest way to go. Um, it's nice to just drop in a pick guard and have it ready. Uh, I cannot for the life of me remember what 920D pick guards I have right now, but I do have at least one and maybe two somewhere. Um, and I've never had a bad experience. You know what I mean? Like I said, they're not inexpensive. I don't think they're overpriced. I wouldn't say that because, you know, by the time you add up all the parts and the labor, if you have somebody do it, you're about there or maybe save a little bit of more, more money. But either way, it's fast and easy and uh, it's great. Um, you know, that, so there you go. Obviously, like all parts, it's horrible resale value, but it's, it's, I don't know. The only suggestion I could give you is sometimes it's cheaper and better for you if you do it yourself, right? But like I just told you, I, I bought a couple from them because of that reason. Sometimes I don't want to do it myself. Sometimes I just want to drop something in and be done. So there you go. Um, oh, we got, wow. We got 200 likes. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, hold on. We have some top chat questions. And I know I'm, I skipped a couple. Don't worry. I'm, if I skip a top chat, don't worry. We'll find them. Um, they move around. On my screen, it's a little different today. Please be uh, understanding of the fact that I'm looking at different stuff than I normally look at because I have a whole new, whole new video chat thing. Hopefully it looks better. I don't know. Um, uh, okay. And hold on a second. We have, uh, so Scarmo Guitar says, stop running, Phil. Okay. People want to see what you would design. Let's do it. Tell him guys, uh, that's quality content. So Scarmo Guitar, I think they're talking about doing a custom guitar build. Um, and I think I talked about this before about pinning that. In other words, like that's something I'd be willing to do, but not right now. Um, that would make sense. It's still same answer. It would be, it would be not right now. Um, because of the fact that I only release the, the problem is I only release so many videos. And if you look like last week, I didn't release why well, I, I did one with Kafir and the week before that I didn't do any videos. Um, and I have them. This is the, the sad part of this week. I did do a video for the patrons this week um uh that is, sometimes the patrons get special videos obviously that don't go to the the mass internet but anyways um 
<laughs> Big idea boy says Phil loves ass hat guitars. Yeah, you can, I, I don't have a problem with it. Like I said, I, if somebody can help me remember what that's quote, I, it's from Caddyshack, right? It, I'm not try, trying to get sidetracked, but that's that statement. Anyways, I love Caddyshack. Anyways, uh, so yeah, it's just a, a time issue. I don't have any time to do anything else. Other, all my projects for the next, I can tell you right now, and in, well into the end of September, all my videos, all my projects are done. So, so don't take it any weird way. Literally, if uh, uh, if a uh, if a uh, if a company reach out to me right now and ask me to review something, I can't even say yes. I've been telling companies no because I I just I have to get to the stuff that I already have to do because I don't like to do too many reviews. I like to mix up the channel with a little bit of like here's a five things video, maybe here's an instructional video, here's an interesting thing video, here's an you know I try not to fatigue everyone with reviews because reviews are great, they're fun, but I don't like everything to be about like hey buy this new shiny thing. It gets really old, so I I, I kind of mix it up. So that's why. Uh, but um, I do have you down in my calendar as stuff that that is f we need to look at coming. So anyways, that being said, what else do we got? Somebody said something about Seymour Duncan. Oh, you know what? I'm going to share something else real quick. Uh, check this out. I'm going to show you something crazy. So um, somebody posted... On my Instagram or Facebook, I don't remember, this week, they said something about my DiMarzio straps uh, so that everybody understands that I use DiMarzio straps. This is something that came up in the past. I use DiMarzio clip lock straps. I've been using them for like 20 something years and I have them on every guitar. And right now, if you look behind me, I think the only guitar that has one is the John Mayer Silver Sky and all the other guitars don't have a DiMarzio strap. And that's when they said that, I was like, oh, did I never share that with everybody what happened? So I had a crazy thing happen I want to share with you. It was really kind of exciting for me. Um, Daddario, Daddario sent me a care package right before I went to Germany. And it was a nice little package. I opened up and it was like their cable, which I'll probably show you guys because it's like a, a how to build a pedal board cable. I thought that was really cool. A couple packs of strings and a strap. Right. It was just something they sent. Um, I, I took it as it was really like a thank you box, because if you guys didn't see it, I'll link it in this index. I did a video showing you guys um, somebody. One of the viewers sent me some counterfeit Daddario strings. And then I explained the difference between the counterfeits and the real Daddario strings. And that, so, you know, that was an epic problem for Daddario. And they they, re they sent me a nice email saying thank you for talking about the subject. It is really hard on us, all this fake uh, stuff. And um, anyways, they sent me a strap and I felt kind of bad because I don't use any straps besides DiMaggio. And but I took I don't know why I took the strap with me to Germany. I thought, well, we're going to be in Germany. Maybe I'll we'll need one for guitars. I'll just take it. So here's what I'm going to show you. Check okay, there you go. Is that better? This is me at the Rocking 1000 event. And this is the strap that I got. This is a locking strap. You see this little piece of plastic that lifts up and it clips on? That's me again at the Rocking 1000 event. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you, hopefully, again, you guys can hear me right now because, again, this is new software stuff, is uh, that um, I, I took the strap, strap and I used it. it and when I was in Germany, Germany I bought a DiMaggio strap for that guitar and put it on. And, and it was killing my shoulder compared to this nice Daddario one. So, so I'm switched. switched. I converted. I'm using these Daddario ones with this uh, crazy, it, it, like it installs in, in one second. You clip it on and then you unclip it off and it's the coolest thing I've ever tried. Um, and um, yeah, it says your mic changed. Is it, hold on, that's better, right? Hopefully that'll fix it. Uh, dual, no dual mics now. So anyways, I told you, new software, new system for today. So anyways, uh, the, the reason I'm just sharing with you is, uh, and I put links down below. So, you know, I put an Amazon link, uh, you know, obviously if you click that, I get, you know, like an affiliate thing. But I, but I know you guys like Sweetwater too, so I put that there. It's not for you guys to get the strap, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, maybe I need to review that. I don't know. Do you review a strap? <laughs> so I thought I'd just share it with you guys real quick. Um, because... Uh, Th th that wasn't a strap that I'm like, hey, check this out. It's pretty cool. I literally put it through its paces. If you watch, I was really killing that guitar. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, the echo should be gone now, right? All right, hopefully. 
So uh, fixed. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, like I said, uh, I have a new, like I said, new software screen that I'm looking at. So I fixed it. Anyways, um, so that's the deal with the straps. Check that out um, if you guys want. And it's an update. If you guys want a review, put it in the comments that you would like me to review the strap. If that's something you review. <laughs> so anyways. Um, okay, wait, hold on. William says the Daddario straps are a PETA trying to get the guitar in the case with them on. Um, no, not this. Um, do I have it here? Hold on a second. I think it's in the other room. Then I will do a review of it. This thing's crazy. Like it pops off in five seconds. Like, and you don't add any, it's a strap lock that doesn't require strap buttons. You use the strap buttons on the guitar. Those are all the no normal strap buttons. So it just clips on. So I will do a video of it. Maybe I'll do it on Instagram. I'll put a video this week on Instagram showing you the strap. Literally, it's crazy. It clips on and it just works. So yeah, Ellen says, uh, please review the strap. I will, but I'll do it on Instagram. That's one minute video. It'd be fast and easy. I'll, I'll post it on Facebook too. Uh, cause I try to do Instagram and Facebook cause some of you guys hate Facebook cause you know, they're evil <laughs> or whatever. And, uh, I understand that. So I try not to put, you know, I try not to, and I'll put it on the website too. That's the reason why we have the website. Cause I put the website up. So you guys solely because I got complaints about Facebook and I want to share information. So I put it on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, the website that way you guys all have access to it and uh, you know everybody's happy that's 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 all we're trying to do I'm trying to make everybody a little little pleased <laughs> okay um, yeah see William's saying the same thing he says I have a Didario strap on my Ibanez JS 1200 won't fit in close fit cases this is not the same strap um, this strap literally does not have any mechanisms that attach to the guitar. It's crazy. So Ben Combs says they even work on strap buttons. Well, here's what's crazy. Uh, you know what? This is why I probably do need the video. The Ibanez that I used had oversized strap buttons that were not recommended by Daddario to use the strap on. And when I popped them on, the, the lock never fully clipped onto those extra wide buttons, which you don't see very often. And it still worked great. <laughs> I was like, I was really impressed. Like I said, I was really impressed. Um, I don't know if it's a plastic breaks over time. That's something I, I can't speak to that. I can tell you, like I said, I, if you watch the video of me at the rock 1000, I was really like really messing with that guitar. Um, and it was doing great. So, and then dragon model says, but is the Diodario thing plastic or metal? It's plastic. It's all plastic. It's molded plastic. Um, and, uh, and that's what actually made me nervous about it. But uh, like I said, so, so, so far, so good. Um, so uh, anyways, I'll do a video. They're like 25 bucks. Same as the, I just thought I'd share with you because uh, I'm not saying I'm not going to use DiMarzio straps anymore, but I literally like this, this, I like this. <laughs> Let's just put it this way. I like it a lot. Um, uh, and now I just found out today, I guess they come in other colors besides black. So, um, yes. Okay. So what else do we got? I went through my list. I, I talked about everything that's worth talking about. Um, anyone else got else, anything else before we, we call it for this weekend? Hold on. Let me make sure I didn't miss a, a top chat or a super chat or a whatever you, they call them now. And hopefully I didn't miss anybody Skarma guitar did too but it's essentially the same question and like i said we'll 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 get around whoops to that um okay i think that's it i think we're gonna call it it was a good that was a good that was a good hangout we did an hour 600 people and and, oh, Gunky Zip said Instagram is Facebook. Right, I understand. That's why I said I do all three now or all four. I just disseminating information. Most people like to go to the website for the information, but um, Big Idea One Hundred says, "Does a pickup?" Okay, great. I like these kind of just right to the point questions. Does a pickup cover affect the tone? Um, 
the the argument is the main argument is yes that it does have a change on the sound it insulates the outer noise that's the whole idea of a pickup a, the, the covers on a humbucker pickup is to kind of insulate the noise that's why they solder the cover to the base of the pickup um so it kind of encapsulates it and helps it prevent uh out you know buzz and six cycle hum and all that stuff to get in there um i'm not saying it right but you understand what i'm saying right the noise um the reason I have trouble saying is, do I, I would never. There's there's things that I can tell you that are quantifiable. I think, and this is not one of those things. There is a large majority of players that think it changes the tone to the point where they remove them sometimes for the tone. Um, me, if there is a tone difference, which I'm not arguing there is or there isn't, I cannot slap a hundred dollars down on a table and say yes. Show me two pickups, same pickup, one without the cover, one with, and I'll hear the difference. I could not tell you the difference. However, like everyone, when I'm playing something, I think I hear a difference, but I don't know whether that is the placebo. That's the problem. Um, so to me, I don't really believe it's enough of a difference that you can hear it, although that doesn't mean there's not enough. There's not any difference. It's just a small amount. And that's the thing. A lot of things, like when people argue on the, <laughs> you know, the internet, when we argue about things, uh, you know, something can be slightly different but not be important. Then, and that's what I think it is. I think there's a slight difference, but I don't think it's important. So, uh, oh, okay. Uh, and again, I like these right to the point. Thoughts on the Godin Freeway Classic that came from Harrison? Just pick one up, old stock for 260 bucks. Oh, the the Golden Freeway Classic's a, a really cool guitar because of that reason. Because so, if you guys don't know what the, he uh, Harrison's talking about, the Godin Freeway. Uh, classic is a guitar that a uh, Godin made made in Canada. I think it's assembled in New Hampshire, right? So it's Canadian parts sent to the U S assembled in New Hampshire. So it's assembled in USA. I think it has to do with import reasons or tax reasons or whatever the reasons they do it. Um, a lot of them, most of them I ever saw come with EMGs, but sometimes you may have seen, I don't know if they all ever, when you see them without EMGs, if that's just aftermarket done or if they ever did a series without them. Very, very cool guitar kind of reminds me not it looks like a jackson but that jackson kind of more of a cool kind of vibe um and uh hold on a second the only thing is what i'm not sure about is you're saying freeway classic and i just want to make sure there's nothing different about the classic versus the freeway yeah nothing so it's uh on the new screen, I can't share with you guys right now the screen, but trust trust me when I tell you it's going to have a very, like a Sir uh, Jackson, you know, uh, kind of vibe to it. Very cool. The body's kind of small. The neck's kind of fast. Really cool guitar. And yes, you can pick them up. Two, 260 is about the cheapest I've seen, that, you know, I've seen. Um, so you did really good. Uh, sometimes 350, yeah, 350 there, because that's a killer deal, you know, right, for a cool guitar. But they don't ever hold value, really. You know what I mean? New, I think they were like six fifty, so um, so they don't hold value. But they are there's they don't hold value because you know not a lot of people, a lot of people are looking for a Godin used. They're just not familiar with the brand. But of course, Godin Godin is a brand that very rarely are you going to find a, a bad quality Godin. Godin makes great stuff. And then we'll end with this. Matt says, "I want to make my Sterling Stingray sound like my Frankenteli with P nineties. Will some." Bare knuckle pickups, humbucker size P90s really get me to that tone. Uh, any recommendations on the bare knuckle P90s? Um, so that that's a tough question, Matt. The if you really want, if you like the P90s in your uh, Frank and Telly, here's here's the easy part. Obviously, the shape of a pickup ha has something to do with the way it sounds. But P90s are essentially a formula of, of a pickup. In other words, it's a ceramic magnet, and it's a certain way it's designed. I'm not familiar with the bare knuckles humbucker size P90s, but what's nice in this question is I don't have to be. Just all you want to do is make sure that they are. So there's a difference between somebody making a humbucker size single coil pickup and calling it a P90 versus somebody who's using the same kind of materials. Um, so uh, my guess is it probably does give you the P90 vibe. Bare knuckles is not a hack company. Obviously, they make great stuff. My Some of my favorite pickups are bare knuckles. Um, so I would imagine that the P90 uh, humbucker size pickups are going to give you that vibe in the Sterling Stingway. The the deal the deal really is going to be the the guitar itself over your Tele. I mean that's a much different Stingray is a much different vibing guitar than Tele. But I think it'll get you there, right? I think it's worth it. Um, uh, th those bare knuckles are going to be pricey though, but I I don't think you'll be disappointed. I just don't think as long as your expectation isn't isn't going to be the same right um 
it's not going to be the same as it's it's not don't ever think that you can make two things sound the same that's the problem but you'll get it you'll get it in the range and then you know what before i go i i thought i saw one more question hidden in here hold on a second uh, i just don't want hold on i thought i saw a question in the top chats I did. Okay, there's two questions, uh, and I don't want to miss them. Neil uh, said last week that custom 72 coupe amp in the background. If so, what did you think of it? I have the 36 and the 72, and I think they're great. Okay, great, Neil. Uh, yeah, I had this uh, 36. I had the custom 36, and it's right there. Yay! Yeah, I got it. Uh, so it's right behind my head. My big head was covering it up, but yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, so I have it. Uh, I, I I love it. I ended up buying one. Um, so, yeah, I like the uh, Coupe 36. It's a cool amp uh, as long as you get it for short money. You know what I mean? They, they don't hold a lot of value, so it's one of those cool cool finds. Uh, Christopher says, thoughts on the Eric Johnson signature pickups? Looking to upgrade my Made Mexico Fenders player strat. Any suggestions? Uh, I think those are great pickups. Um, you know, Eric Johnson, uh, he's got a great ear, man. And, uh, and uh, he makes great his guitar is great his pickups are great i got nothing to say bad say about him and the reason why i say that is actually i want to end on this note with eric johnson he's great because his pickups don't make you sound like him or they're not vibed like his tone they just have a great strat tone he, his strat is a great sounding strat it doesn't have to be you don't have to buy an eric johnson strat to get the eric johnson sound you can just buy it because you want a great sounding strat so yeah, that's a great set of pickups. I would definitely suggest those, like, uh, and not feel like I, I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think you'd be unhappy. I, I can't imagine those pickups are are fantastic. And then Matt had a follow up. Said thanks for inspiring me to work on my gear. Oh man, that's awesome. Uh, thank you so much uh, for letting me know that. And um, and uh, next week I got a cool uh, uh, thing to share with you guys about some repairs that are coming that are cool and how you can participate in this. Uh, doing some repairs so be ready for that as a little teaser and uh, i want to thank everyone especially the uh, the patrons that make this uh, happen every week and this week i want to mention there is a new patron hold on i want to mention the new patron um since i don't have the system to, to, to mention all the 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 normal patron list i just want to give steven shipman uh he's a new patron he started today he even put a comment on one of the videos on the patron side i appreciate you steven for doing that thank you so much and uh and on that note i'm gonna exit with just giving a shout out real quick to all the patrons uh all the patrons that make the support the show we call it the support show group uh patrons they fund this uh shindig every week and they should get a shout out it's jeff howe zachary rowe michael newman hanner gunson john jacks michael shy justin mabe passy pekinning uh alzdar mcleod andy dennis anthony desposito bob crosley bob pickwood brian quackenbush Brian Stewart, Bruce Collins, Chief Squatch, Chris at the Guitar Pit, Chris from New Mexico, Craig Parker, Dennis Prescott, Derek Miller, Aaron Kemiker, Gary Phillips, Gene Graham, Greg Peterson, James Biles, John Russell, Jonathan Pickering, Joseph McCarthy, Kermit Jackson, Larry Culkin, Lawrence Petros, Lonnie Hoke, Michael Lindner, Michael Mooney, uh, Muse guitarist, Paul Ostrak, Louis and Alvaro, Sam Oram, 